So hey friends, how are things? Shorter time from the normal, right? It's not too bad. Still didn't get the week, every week thing that I've been working on, but I'm getting closer. Uh, I'm sorry I might look a little bit disheveled right now. I have no idea how I look. I just did this quick setup with the camera and the microphone uh, so I could shoot the intro to this, but uh, I was delayed for a while and I'm finally in my hotel so I can do this. Um, but the reason I wanted to shoot this video today is because I wanted to revisit uh, something that I shot a really long time ago um, and it's this really small speaker called the Muse in Audio and it essentially is the biggest hipster bait thing I've ever seen like it's just super vintage looking it's very tiny you can take it anywhere it has all these extras that really bring in that sort of vintage package but the reason why I wanted to do it is because I love portable speakers and I use them for trips all the time but I also wanted to see if this had any sort of value or merit outside of the fact that being a pretty face. Um, so spoiler alert, it surprised me. Um, but there's plenty more to talk about this, so I'll let the video speak for itself. So enjoy. The Musin OTR Metal comes packaged in a lovely plastic hard case. Depending on which one you select, the color and materials will vary. There is a nice breakdown of the specs on the back side of the box, and it comes adorned with a leatherette handle. Upon opening, you are presented with a speaker that is cozily nested in its leather case. An elastic band keeps everything locked in, and there are some pamphlets, manuals, and coasters strapped to the lid. The unboxing and presentation of this whole package is just so wonderful. The O3R metal is a 95 by 72 by 56 millimeter speaker equipped with Bluetooth 4.0. This little guy packs a 40 millimeter loudspeaker and weighs about 195 grams. It is powered by a 1000 milliamp battery that can hold you down for about 8 hours at 50% volume. However, it does take about 3 hours to charge it up fully. Musin has included a bunch of goodies with this speaker to help it meet your needs. They give you a micro USB cable for charging, aux cable for manual interfacing, and leather straps, carrying case, and cover to protect the speaker and give it some carryability and wearability conveniences. Personally, I can't see myself using the shoulder strap, but I'll definitely be using the carry case and handle included. The speaker itself is a lovely weight, and the metal used feels solid and nice to the touch. The underside is adorned with rubber feet for isolation when placed on solid ground. Musin does offer, well I guess used to offer, a wooden stand. It was supposed to enhance the listening experience, but in my testing I really didn't notice anything different. It doesn't seem like I can find it on their website anymore, so maybe that was the reason it was pulled. The knobs maintain the retro aesthetic and feel well placed and easy to move. The left controls the volume, and the right allows you to swap between inputs of Bluetooth, aux, and FM radio. The indicator light on the bottom left will give you a visual representation of battery life, and the tuning knob to the right of the actual loudspeaker also lights up in a vintage orange tint. The backside reiterates the specs and contains your bass vent and charging and aux ports. I did notice while editing this that there apparently is also an antenna port, but I'm not sure how well this works. The stock FM transmitter worked just fine when I was in cabins over the winter. Now that we set the rundown, I'll give you a little sound sample and compare it to the JBL Flip 4. Keep of note that the speaker that I will be using will be the wood version because I gifted the metal version to a friend. I will preface that I do feel like the metal version sounded slightly better, but I could be just completely in love and bias to the build of the metal.
From the sound sample, you can hear that these two speakers have very different sound signatures. The Musin has a wonderful sparkle as it emphasizes the trebles and mids more. Vocals and strings have staying power, while the bass is more controlled and muted. The JBL has a warmer sound signature with its more bass-centric sound. While the JBL will be more forgiving across genres and get louder due to its speaker build, the Musin has a beautiful character to it that will lead you to find songs that you prefer playing on the Musin versus other speakers. So Musin has made a really small and compelling product that is surprisingly worthwhile. I thought it was all gonna be smoke and mirrors, but this speaker packs a little punch for what it's got. Um, but that makes me really think about how I want to frame this recommendation because the speaker is wonderful and I would suggest anyone check it out, but it is not for everyone. It is for a certain type of people. It's just really gonna come down to what your need is. If you're looking for something that's rugged or waterproof or that can punch out a lot of volume for like a larger get together, then this is probably isn't what you are looking for. That, there's the Fugus and JBLs of the world that will cover you on that side. This is more for if you want to express a little bit more character. Just because it comes in so many different materials and it comes in so much different colors that you can sort of make it match you. As well as the fact that it's just such an attractive package that it's a great conversation starter if you're in public or just a great centerpiece to a smaller get together. So this is great if you're just like playing cards and drinking on the porch or, you know, just in the park hanging out and people watching. The speaker's perfect for all that sort of thing. But if you need a little bit more volume and you want something that's a little bit warmer and less sparkly on the trebles and mids, then, you know, try something like the JBL. Um, but the company seems to be doing extremely well. All the products that I've seen from them are extremely well manufactured, so I think it's a low risk to try them. However, if you are sort of hesitant still on buying it because of the price point, which I understand, 135 bucks for a tiny speaker, not ideal, definitely follow them on social media or join their news newsletter. They do send out a lot of communications and you know, I've seen this thing go on promotion at least four times this year. So there's definitely going to be opportunities where you can get this speaker for, you know, anywhere from 20 to $40 off, which would make it a sub $100 speaker, which would be a much better value than it is right now. But overall, I recommend the speaker. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for. But anyway, I hope that was informative. I'm sorry if I kind of came off rambly, but I'm a little bit delirious from the flight. But yeah, please comment, like, subscribe, do all the things that you normally do on a video you like and love. But I've been really appreciating all those comments, especially if on the older videos. I've seen that people have been asking for certain headphone recommendations. I apologize if I can't get to them or if I don't know what I'm talking about, but I don't like to give my input unless I have a, like a comparison to give you. So I'll do my best. I might not get to it and, until I learn more about it. But yeah, also suggestions on other things I should check out, I can definitely look at and add it to my list. So keep engaging, keep, keep me honest on this schedule. I know it's not quite a week yet, but getting closer as I get back into this. That's been really, really fun. So yeah, anyway, appreciate you guys sticking around. Later.